Join me in this video as I show you around this one-of-a-kind Repack 1900 Classic, a steel liveaboard boat that was built in 2002. I spotted this remarkable boat during a visit to Devolk's Marina in Sneak, and when I saw her I had a feeling that she would spark some interest amongst my subscribers. Not only because of her classical styling, but because of who this boat used to belong to. Make sure you stay tuned for more. Before I show you around this really special boat, please don't forget to give the video a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's see how quickly we can get to 100,000 subscribers. As you can see, the whole shape on this boat is round bilged and she has a long keel for added stability. A long keel also helps protect the hull should you make contact with a sandbank while navigating through tidal areas such as where I live near the North Sea. From here you can see the top of the boat's rudder. She's actually fitted with a special van der Veld rudder which turns through two alternate sectors of 60 degrees, meaning that she can turn in her own length. She also has a controllable pitch propeller, which helps to contribute to her incredible range, but more about that later on in the video. As we enter the cockpit via the passerelle located midships, you can see that this area is covered and protected from the sun, thanks to the awning. Over on the starboard side is the entrance into the saloon. Of course, we'll have a look in there in a second. There's a handy locker space located here where you can stow all of your gear whilst it's not in use. The custom made Bimini has a stainless steel frame. The relatively low bulwarks mean that you and your guests would get a great view while sat here enjoying the seascape. Let's head to the bow of the vessel using the starboard side deck. The steel deck is finished with non-skid paint and there are plenty of scuppers to allow any wash to quickly flow off the deck. As you can probably tell, this boat has both a lower and upper saloon. And of course, we're gonna go inside and check those areas out in a minute. And check out the high threshold on the starboard door that leads into the pilot's house. A sure sign that you're on a boat that is made for some serious passage making. This raised area here on the left side is atop the owner's cabin. Of course, we'll have a look around there shortly. The boat is fitted with two 80 kilogram anchors and has 90 meters of 14 millimeter chain that is deployed and recovered using a hydraulic Thor windlass. This skylight atop the owner's cabin allows lots of natural light and fresh air into the owner's area. The boat has a total of six berths in three cabins which are finished in mahogany and you'll see later on in the video this helps to create a very warm comfortable and relaxed environment. All of the windows have been tinted with hard glass and in the front of the wheelhouse they're 10 plus 5 millimeters thick and 8 plus 5 millimeters thick in all other spaces. The window frames are stainless steel and they're recessed with solid teak frames. The length of the waterline is 17.62 meters and she has a minimum draft of 1.43 meters. She was also repainted in 2011. Before we head into the interior spaces, let me show you around the boat deck and take a closer look at that yellow funnel. This boat has two tenders, a wooden sailing dinghy, as well as a 2.7 meter Zodiac rib that is fitted with an eight horsepower Yamaha outboard engine. The wooden mast is lowered and raised manually. With the mast lowered, her minimum air draft is 3.4 meters. Now, what about that yellow funnel? A feature that conjures up feelings of nostalgia when you gaze upon this vessel's classic lines. As you can see, it houses the radar and is not actually a working funnel. The boat does have a dry exhaust, but the outlet is not in the funnel. And check out how much space you get on this area. It would be perfect for fitting out with lots of solar panels. So let's talk a little bit more about who this boat used to belong to. I'm sure that you've heard of Repack, one of the best known yacht design studios. Well, this boat used to belong to Repack's founder, Dick Boone, and as a huge fan of Repack's incredible work, it is an honor, and I really mean that, to be aboard this boat. Long before I started my YouTube channel, I used to follow Repack's work, and several years later, here I am on board Mr. Boone's stunning boat. 
Isn't it funny how the universe works sometimes? And if you follow Vripak's work, then I'll be really interested to know which of their projects is your favourite and why. Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm sure that for many of you it will be their massive sports fisher project which they are currently working on. You can find out more about that on their website. Let us start the interior section of this boat tour in the lower saloon. As we descend some steps we enter this very warm and inviting living area. The headroom in the saloon is a very comfortable 2 meters. Central heating is provided by a Cabola B17 system and the boat is also fitted with a reverse cycle air conditioning system comprising of three Marine Air 16,000 BTU units. So the boat is ideally suited to both hot and cold climates which is very handy considering a 5,000 nautical mile range. I really like this L-shaped seating area in the aft section of the saloon and the open plan design means that you can converse with whoever it is that is on cooking duties in the open galley which is located over here on the port side. The galley comes complete with marble countertops and a stainless steel sink as well as a 130 litre ISO firm fridge there is also a vitrifigo freezer. There is also a whirlpool microwave that can also double up as a mirror to practice your salutes. The galley is also kitted out with a gas cooker and an oven grill. The fact that this boat was located in an enclosed marina at the time of filming means that you get a good idea regarding the warm vibe that this area gives off in the evening and at night. I love the use of lighting throughout the boat as it is not too dark and is not too bright. It's just right. And now we come to the part of the yacht tour where I show you around the accommodation on board this beautiful vessel. By the way, if you haven't already, don't forget to check out my other channel, Boat Boy. I'll leave a link for that channel in the description. So over here on the port side of the boat, we've got the first twin single cabin. A really nice look and a really nice feel in here. And just check out that traditional port hole. Now that is what you call a port hole. But there's lots of storage space in here as well. I can imagine it being incredibly comfortable just relaxing in here after a day out at sea. And of course, you've probably already noticed the amount of headroom in here. Uh, you know, there's at least seven inches of headroom above me and I'm six foot four. I really like the lighting in here. It creates a very nice atmosphere. You can also control uh, the climate in here as well independently but yeah there's a good amount of space between the two berths as well uh, and they're a decent sized berth as well they're not small uh, you're not going to be clambering on top of each other uh, if you've got two guests in here and there's also enough space to keep all of your essential gear uh, for your trips away so yeah lovely cabin uh, and of course you can close the curtains in there if you wanted to for some additional privacy as well as actually shutting up the, the porthole. But yeah, I would be more than happy to stay in here. Really nice feel, really nice comfortable cabin. Uh, you've got your sockets there as well uh, so you can plug in your laptop or whatever it is you're going to bring with you uh, on your voyage. Stepping over on to the starboard side, uh, we've got another twin single in here. Uh, this is more of a bunk configuration. Um, but yeah, there's still a good amount of room in here. Uh, probably ideally suited for your smaller people, such as children, if you're going to be bringing them on board. Uh, a great place for them to sit uh, and enjoy the view whilst you're underway, as well as getting some decent shut eye. Uh, but again, yeah, good amount of headroom in here. Got your own little reading lights on both of the bunks as well. Another one just under there. I mean, we are undercover at the moment, so it's a bit darker in here than what you'd expect, but that's because uh, we are in a sheltered uh, marina, uh, which is a great place to uh, have your boat when it's winter like it is at the moment. But yeah, some good hanging space. Good amount of hanging space in there. Right, let's take you forward. Over here on the port side, uh, we have the uh, the owner's uh, bathroom, which also doubles up as a space 
to do your laundry as well. So we've got a, a melee washer over here on the left hand side and a dryer over here on the right. So if you did want to stay on board for some extended voyages, you've got those essential appliances there uh, neatly stowed away uh, in this part of the boat. Two sinks as well, as you can see, nice size, lots of space, big old mirror, give another salute there. I like the use of this uh, lighting. Again, it just creates a really nice relaxing atmosphere. Uh, decent sized shower over here. You can quite easily get in there, even wash on the way. If you're in a bit of a choppy seas, you're not gonna be kind of bouncing around everywhere. It's just enough space in there that you're not gonna be kind of falling over, but you've still got a good amount of space to give yourself a proper wash down. Obviously the boat's fitted with uh, magnet stabilizers as well. So if you are using this whilst you're on the way, uh, you've got a good amount of stability keeping the boat nice and steady. Uh, let's have a look in here. I didn't actually open this. Oh, there we go, look, another, another bathroom here, which is basically a wet head, but really good condition. I mean, when you consider the age of this boat, um, and that she's been well used as well. You wouldn't think it when you're looking around because you know even the fittings on here and the fixtures have been really well maintained. But yeah, another great space. More storage in there for your toiletries. They go quite far back as well. You probably can't tell on the camera because of the low light. But yeah, let's take you up into the owner's cabin. So we're facing forward now. Spiral staircase on the starboard side leading up into the owner's cabin, which is a really special place. I mean, you probably didn't see it as I was walking up, but you've got handrails coming up the steps. And look at these windows. It really does feel like you've gone back in time. But I love it. I love the, 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 the essence of this boat and the general feeling you get when you're walking around. A decent sized bed, more stowage there for your books. But what a view when you're laying down. Obviously, I'm not going to lay on the bed, but when you're laying down, check out that view. On a clear night, you could easily make out the stars. Over here on the port side, we've got a sink. You can brush your teeth when you get up and go to bed without having to go down into the bathroom. Again, yeah, look at these windows. So you can slide that window up to get some extra ventilation in here. Also, you've got a vent up there and another one over here as well. Plenty of space, hanging locker space. On the other side as well. You open these up. Yeah, there's plenty of uh, plenty of space for all your essential stuff for your extended voyages away. But yeah, again, you know, loads of headroom in here, and it feels really spacious, really airy, really bright, very comfortable. The heaters are on, and there's a really nice heat throughout the boat. And it's five degrees outside, so it's pretty nippy. But in here, we're nice and toasty and warm. Fire extinguisher up there. If you do need any safety gear for your boat, remember to check out my Amazon store. I'll leave a link for that in the bio. But now we've finished having a look around the accommodation areas. Let me take you up into the pilot's house. We'll have a look around there before heading into the engine room. But yeah, what do you think of this accommodation area? Share your thoughts in the comments below. As we exit from the accommodation area, we ascend some stairs pass through the saloon and then emerge into an upper saloon and of course the pilot house. Behind the helm station we have this formal dining area that enables your guests to enjoy some fantastic views. And over here on the starboard aft side of the pilot house we have access onto the boat deck. Over on the pool side we have this incredibly comfortable L-shaped seating area and over on the starboard side we have some more cabinetry and a great place to do any chart work if you wanted to use the traditional paper charts. Now, when it comes to her navigation equipment, being a CE Category A vessel, 
She has all of the essential equipment that you would expect on a long range explore yacht, including a Radio Zealand electric compass, an RS-82 Shipmate VHF radio, a Radio Zealand autopilot and a Simrad NS-015 radar with a 15 inch monitor. All of the vessel's essential controls are within easy reach of the helm position and everything is laid out in a very practical and clutter free way. The boat does have a bow thruster but thanks to the excellent manoeuvrability provided by the van der Velde rudder then she does not really need a stern thruster. The hydraulic bow thruster provides 25 horsepower. I really love the traditional ship's wheel and the traditional dials on board as well. But what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Now before we head down into the engine room, let me pan around and show you this area once more. There's also some interesting features on the deck that I want to show you. Something that I haven't seen on a boat before. And I'll be interested to know whether you've seen anything like this on a boat. I am of course referring to these two glass features in the deck. I'll be completely honest with you, when I first saw them, I thought they were both uplighters, but it turned out I was wrong, very wrong. Just before I take you down into the engine room, let me just quickly nip back down into the accommodation. I wanna show you the underside of those skylights there. And there we go, so on a bright sunny day, these actually are lit up uh, as if they were really bright lights, which feature I've never seen on a boat before. But I can imagine that when you're in the Mediterranean, which is where this boat spent quite a bit of time recently, down in Greece uh, during the day, I bet these light up really nicely. But yeah, if you've seen a feature like that before on a boat, let me know in the comments. I certainly haven't. But now let's go and have a look in the engine room and access is via the opposite side of the saloon. The boat is powered by a single Perkins Sabre 209 horsepower 153 kilowatt engine. It enables the boat to cruise with a maximum speed of 9 knots and gives her a cruising speed of between 7 and 8 knots depending on load and conditions. Now the really interesting thing about this boat when it comes to her technical details is the fact that she has a range of 5,000 nautical miles. And that is achieved because of the following. At 1400 RPM, the Perkins engine reaches its maximum torque, but thanks to the controllable pitch propeller, the yacht can cruise at just under eight knots with only 1500 RPM, instead of the 2150 RPM that you would get with a fixed propeller. This means that despite the displacement of 65 tonnes, she only burns 16 litres of fuel per hour. Her steel fuel tank can hold 11,800 litres of fuel. Her freshwater tank has a capacity of 5,000 litres and her blackwater tank has a capacity of 1,100 litres. When it comes to her stabilisation, she is fitted with the incredibly effective DMS Magnus Master Rotor Stabilisers. I covered this incredible system in a bit more detail in the video that I made about Motor Yacht Astra. So if you haven't already, make sure you check that video out. I will leave a link to that video in the video description. And if you want to contact the manufacturers of the Magnus Master system, then you can find their email address on the screen now. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like because it means that more people on YouTube will get to see the video. And also, if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the Volk Yacht Brokers for letting me come out here and film this spectacular boat. And also a big thanks to the owner as well. And remember, if you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, feel free to get in contact with me. I'll leave my contact details in the video description. And don't forget to come and follow me on social media to find out what I'm up to next. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. 
If you enjoyed the boat featured in this video, then I'm sure you're going to love the video that I made about this classic boat as well. I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner of your screen. If that doesn't show up, make sure you head to the link in the video description. As always, I'd like to say a big thank you to my channel members for helping to support my channel. I cover the cost for these trips myself, so any contribution really does help. And I'll be looking at working on some members only content over the next few weeks. If you're interested in becoming a member, simply click on the link in the video description. 